This project is in a really important location and that it's right in between Big Springs Creek and some springs upstream on Parks Creek. I was originally involved in this project in 2003, working on this as an engineer. The landowners weren't quite ready at that time, but fast forward to 2010, and we were able to obtain funding through the National Fish and Wildlife Federation and design both the pump station and the piping, as well as this passage project, and do all the permitting and all the CEQA and NEPA required uh, in order to make this project shovel ready. We were able to then, in 2019, obtain funding through the Wildlife Conservation Board, as well as more funding through U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Fish and Wildlife Federation to build this important project. In 2020, we started by first moving the point of diversion and building a pump station for the Cardoza Ranch, 2.8 miles downstream onto the Shasta River near the Louis Road Bridge, and putting in more than 18,000 feet of new buried mainline that could irrigate the ranch from the north as opposed to the south which is what they did historically. Once that had occurred, we could focus on the real linchpin, which was the fish passage barrier. Historically, these were two four-foot culverts that he used to block to build a 25-acre impoundment. Now, with the point of diversion out of the way, we could do a fish-friendly culvert. It's a 20-foot aluminum span culvert partially buried that now provides passage to a more than 16 miles of habitat upstream on Parks Creek and in Kettle Springs Creek. In the first year of moving the point of diversion downstream, we saw a real benefit in this lower part of parks. In 2020 pre-project where we had UC Davis do monitoring, we saw one CFS of flow, one CFS. The same time the following year after the point of diversion was moved downstream, we measured six CFS of flow in lower parks. We also saw um, seven degrees Celsius of improved temperature, a huge improvement. From here on, we'll be able to improve conditions further by doing habitat improvement work in lower parks to help maintain those cold waters and maintain access between Big Springs Creek and Kettle Springs Creek. The Klamath River is home to some of the largest salmon runs in California. Not only that, it's a hub of biodiversity and endemism, species found nowhere else on the planet. The Shasta River is one of the last anadromous streams downstream of that river restoration project and will provide the fish that will help colonize those newly opened habitats. Not only that, the Shasta River is the only spring-fed source water that's still accessible to anadromous fishes. Nearly the entirety of the anadromous streams in the Shasta River are on private lands. Given private property laws in our country, it's really important to have cooperative and voluntary approaches with landowners. We have to work with landowners to find solutions and we have to find ways to fund those solutions. Regulatory approach has its limitations. It's been exactly a year now since we started with the new system. What we have experienced is uh, interesting. We've had actually heavy production Generally in the winter time, starting in the fall, uh, we would start uh, thinking about feeding our cows hay that's been stored. We're now just opening up the barn to feed the cows hay, which is odd to us. In the entire um, winter, the cows uh, ate grass. The weather was very dry, but the uh, supply of grass stayed thick, and uh, we ended up with a very heavy crop. The only thing I can attribute to that too is the Water is more consistent. It's distributed in a better way for all the plants that are in the field. We had all hoped for um, the condition on the ranch to, you know, to improve uh, with the system, and it really did. In the summer of 2021, for the first time, water use was curtailed in the Shasta River due to emergency drought regulations. Currently, we're in a mega drought with the last two decades being the driest in the last millennia. The old way of doing business is no longer possible. To solve these complex problems, we need creative solutions based in science, technology, partnerships, and collaboration. The Cardoza Ranch is a great example of where you can see this coming together to find a solution to facilitate not only success of our anadromous fish species, but also food production in the region feel really inspired and also hopeful for how we can build upon this project in the future. 
but also using this project as an example for other landowners on what's possible on their own properties. Not only is it helping the resource, it's also helping the landowner. So what we do have is positive hope for the future uh, for the cows and for the fish and hopefully for us as humans as well.